Hey, um, just you know, as your first uh, introduction here to the you know media and the fans of Atlanta, just kind of walk us through your um, you know journey to to here uh, through the CFL and you know playing uh, Division Two in Pennsylvania and uh, you know trying to make it here in the league with the Saints and uh, the Raiders and then now coming to Atlanta. Yeah, I was about to say, how much uh, time do you have for me to get through that? <laughs> no. <a> no. <laughs> um, so, no. So, I went to D2. I was a preferred walk-on. Um, I actually have more scholarship offers for track than I did football. Um, mm -hmm. But my journey what took me to D2. I didn't redshirt. I led the team in tackles on special teams. I earned a starting safety job um, that springtime. Earned $1,500 of scholarship. Um and then, you know, I played my four years there, had my pro day, put up some solid numbers at my pro day, but I was kind of a tweener between a linebacker safety. I was about 226 at the time. Um, no workouts, no invites or anything. So I went back home, work at a, at our potato chip factory, us potato chips, and kind of where all the summer, summer jobs, all the college kids go back, you know, working $9 an hour, just making some money. So then I had to go back to school to finish up my degree so I went back to school with no scholarship, had to work, get a job and work at uh, UPS. So I started loading the trucks, but then I wanted to, I wanted to make some more money. So I became a manager to manage all the belts for the boxes to go out and stuff like that. Um, paid $80 for and come like about April, paid $80 and drove five hours to Buffalo, New York to work out for the Hamilton Tiger Cats at the CFL. Um, they called me Monday, offered me a three year deal. And I, I signed that deal. And then my first stint in the NFL came in 2016. Um, that year, I made the 53. I played four games, came back from the bye week after moving my family in. So this is, I am kind of superstitious about moving myself now. I uh, packed the U-Haul myself, moved the kids. I, so I pulled our one car down, uh, followed my grandfather and other, our other car. I had a dog or two cats in the car with us. And I drove all the way to Louisiana on my bye week. And then, like, three days later, I tore my ACL on both my meniscus. So I'm like, I will not move myself again. <laughs> like, superstitious right. about it. So I uh, tore my ACL. I rehab back, got released by um, New Orleans in 2017. And that's when I started with the Raiders. And, um, yeah, I played four seasons there. And now I'm, I'm in Atlanta. Well, all right. Thanks a lot. I won't, uh, We got other people. I'll follow up later. I just want to know when you first met the GM, Terry Fontenot, when you uh, yep, in that 2000, 2016, I had my workout on February. They flew me down February 1st. I, I worked out February 2nd and signed February 2nd. Thank you. Yep. Great. Tori McElhaney from The Athletic. Hi, Eric. It's very nice to meet you. Um, welcome to Atlanta. I guess I just want to hop off of uh, D-LED's uh, question. How did you kind of get on the NFL radar, on the Saints radar, when you were playing in the CFL? I I'm just curious kind of how that worked out for you, because I know some people have different stories in terms of how they get on the radar of certain teams. So what what's your story in terms of that time period of your life? Yes, yeah, so at the time I was in the CFL, I had a, one of my best friends, Delvin Bro, who has an tremendous story as well um, as far as just overcoming adversity and I was on a three-year deal he was on a two-year deal he he finished his two years he came down he had a bunch of NFL workouts he signed with the Saints had a tremendous first year with them and you know he just kept we talked about this over and over again hey we're, I'm gonna go down there you're gonna come down there and meet me and this and that so he just kept putting the word in for me and like pretty much bugging them hey work my guy out like he can do it all so finally they gave in after listening to him for a whole year uh they worked me out and um that was all she wrote and it's just been blessings ever since nice and making the the jump from from cfl linebacker to nfl db what what was that process like what were some of those things that you remember kind of making that initial jump and maybe some of the challenges or, or honestly the successes that you felt during that time yeah, I think uh, one of the positives I took from the CFL was a lot of things happen po uh, pre-snap before, like all the motions and the running and stuff like that. So you're kind of checking into different um, coverages and just communicating with multiple people. So everything was happening a lot faster. Um, and then just the conditioning of the CFL, I felt like you there was more running involved, the three down. So there's more turnover in between series and stuff like that. 
um, shorter play time, um, play clock. But I guess when I came down to the NFL, one of the struggles, well, not struggles, but things I had to adapt with is just the speed in between the whistles. Post-snap, the NFL is a lot faster because feels shorter, things happen faster, uh, windows close uh, faster. Um, the running the ball, you know, obviously in the CFL, they run the ball, but not as often as they do it here. I'm like, oh, shoot, you know. So in the, in the CFL as well, there's 12 guys. So you see five wideouts and you think there's not a running back in the backfield. Well, there still is. So when down here, when you see five wideouts, it's empty. There's no running back. So just a little bit of difference. Um, but really, and just getting used to tight ends. They don't really use tight ends in the CFL. So just adjusting where we're setting the fronts and stuff like that in the NFL is, was a little different and had to get used to it. Not only do they use one tight end here, they use two, three <laughs> at a time. Awesome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Michael Rothstein from ESPN. Hey, Eric. How's it going? I'm curious more now, based in Atlanta, like, have you been given an indication by Arthur what your role is actually going to be and where they're planning on using you, how they're planning on using you? I um, really haven't gone into detail about that. Um, I'm re just really excited to join something something special that they're building in that building. And, um, you know, Arthur, met Arthur, um, Terry, um, you know, got to talk to a couple other guys and stuff like that. And I'm just excited to be a part of something that's bigger than me. Um, you know, obviously they have the pieces. We have the pieces here in Atlanta. And I'm just looking forward to bringing my leadership um, and what I can control and just, you know, helping the younger guys around me to be better players, um, helping them to take the thinking away from some guys and just allow them to be the athletes they are. And um, really it comes down to just my leadership. And I want to go back to, you know, your story about D2 walk on a little bit. When you're walk working in the Uts factory, when you're driving for UPS, do you ever think you get here like five, six years in the league? Like, is that even in your head at that point? That that's even like, possible um i mean yes and no like so like not knowing where my future was going but at the same time i felt in my heart that there was a place for me in the nfl i didn't know what the journey would take me so like i said when i when i signed with the cfi i signed a three-year deal for Forty-five thousand dollars Canadian dollars. So you know, after after the exchange rate and all that stuff, it's probably what twenty-five thousand dollars in taxes and stuff like U.S. And um, so I, I I took a chance. It was uh, it was an opportunity for me to continue to play ball. Um, just looking at my situation, didn't go to a big school. Went to a really talented D2 school, but you know, never was really the man at D2 um, at my school. We had a lot of D1 transfers that kind of got overlooked by. But, you know, it's all a part of, you know, this is not like a, a marketing thing, but all a part of like my brand that I'm, I'm creating is having faith and having faith is um, just having faith in yourself, having faith in the confidence, having faith in your surroundings and what your goals are. Um, and so I'm a huge believer in that. So the journey has been amazing. And, you know, I have a lot of people to thank for that. Cool. Paul Newberry, AP. Hi, Eric. Uh, welcome to Atlanta. Uh, you mentioned uh, the um, that you're uh, excited about what they're building in Atlanta, but also, I, I guess, are you realistic about that it's a, a, a bit of a rebuilding job is going on here? Uh, they had to deal with some salary cap issues and obviously coming off three straight losing seasons. And, you know, even Arthur and Terry have sort of talked about kind of couched expectations a little bit. Um, was that at all a concern uh, coming here, you know, if a team that is appears to be in kind of a rebuilding mode? You know, I think people use the word rebuilding and they take it in a negative sense. I hear rebuilding. I hear opportunity. Um, I'm a father of four kids. So every day I have opportunities to teach my kids uh, something about life. Um, not always in the right state of mind, am I, and have the patience to actually like take the time, you know, but it's an opportunity to you know, help out. It's an opportunity to be a uh, part of something bigger than than myself. So I think I really thrive in um, areas like that. Um, my goal is to go in there and to serve the Falcons uh, the organization and just to be the best version I can be of myself. Do you, uh, one thing too about, uh, you, you talked about, the, was it UPS? 
and uh, and the potato. Tell me a little bit about uh, we all know what uh, they do at UPS, and especially in the pandemic, we've seen a lot of them. But what was the what was the potato chip factory job? What was that like? Oh man, it was the worst. <laughs> it was the worst job in the whole plant. Um, I worked above you know, 600 degree ovens, and it was about 110 degrees in there every day. I had to wear pants. So I would take 50 pound corn flour bags and dump it into a dry hopper, send it up into a mixer, mix it up, pour it down to the fryers underneath of me. So did that for 11 hours for a whole summer. Um, very humbling. Uh, it was very humbling. So I uh, do not miss that job, but I am thankful for that job. Jason Butt, AJC. Hey, Eric. Uh, welcome to Atlanta. Um, you know, your story, you know, being a walk on, um, not getting those workouts pre draft. You know, um, why do you think for you it, it took so time, so much time to get noticed? And does it make you wonder how many other guys this league might miss on um, with similar backgrounds who can otherwise play in the NFL? Yeah. Um... I get I get a lot of I get a lot of direct messages uh, from guys in my position um, as far as just you know the long journey um, kind of no name type of guys and you know I just encourage all those guys to continue to chase their dreams um, understand that it is a timing thing when it comes to you know the NFL um, but just continue to work and grind um, it's it's a tough process. Like I said, it's all about having faith and, and being confident in your work and just that something will work out. And I just feel like, you know, my situation, it was, what, two years ago on Thursday Night Football um, against the Chargers when I kind of had that breakout game to where those people may be struggling to, I'm not good enough or I'm not going to make it. It was it was some encouragement to hear my story and to continue to push along. So I feel like I went through my journey for that reason. You know, when you say keep the faith, um, is it is it difficult to, to do such a thing when when it you are at the potato chip factory and working for UPS? But also, um, where does that come from for you to know that you'll be there at the end of the journey? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's not easy. It's not easy at all. And having faith is something that you have to practice daily. Um, it's just a part of walking walking in life and. Um, I think life is all about perspective and how you perceive each situation. So, you know, it's easy, easier said than done to take the positive out of every situation. But that's what I've always tried to do. And like I said, you know, I, my wife is my high school sweetheart. She's been there all along to help push me and just help me through everything. Uh, my mom, I credit my mom, single mother, of six kids, uh, had a grandfather, had a lot of father figure coaches. So there's there's just been a really unique group of people that has always surrounded me and always has taken me in as far as, you know, looking at me as a son, uh, my friends, parents and stuff like that. And just really supporting me and just being open minded to the fact that, you know, there's something bigger out there than just everybody's situation. Kelsey Conway, Atlanta Falcons. Hey, Eric, you've talked a lot about um, your journey to getting where you are, but now that you've, you know, achieved your dream of getting to be in the NFL, what, what do you feel like you still have left to accomplish? Um, I feel like I still have a lot to give back to the game. Um, football IQ, um, you know, continue to build on something here in the Atlanta uh, organization. Like I said, they have the pieces. Um, I, I was on the other end of it last year, you know, they have the pieces. So be great teams, lose to not so not so good teams. Um, I think, you know, it comes down to culture and just holding each other accountable in the locker room uh, and playing for each other. You know, it's easy to get caught up in um, accolades in this game and contracts and, and money in this game. But when you play for the guy next to you, you can get through those hard times. You can get through those tough fourth quarters. Um, because you can look at the next guy beside you and say, hey, I got your back, you know, and it actually means something. Do you have a favorite Uts chip? <laughs> um, walking on my lunch break, I would always uh, uh, um, salt and vinegar. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a sucker for salt and vinegar. <laughs> Zach Klein with WSB. I agree, man. I can pound like five bags of those. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> right. Hey, what's uh, were you on, on in 2016? Refresh my memory. Did you ever take the field against Julio? Were you ever on the field against the Falcons? 
Um, I actually did. That was my first NFL action on defense. Um, I think it was it was either Sunday night or Monday night football. It was prime time. Um, Jerry's bird, he got the wind knocked out of him. So I went in there for two plays. That's when Sanu was still there, Julio, a, a few other receivers. So yeah, I got two reps, but then I went back to my special teams role. <laughs> so you, didn't have, you didn't have time to talk trash to Julio or anything like that? No, I wouldn't do that. I was still trying to get my, my legs were shaking. I was trying to get my feet under me. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and then what was the welcome to the NFL moment where you're like, realize, all right, uh, this is not the CFL anymore. Um, I mean, I think it's just the overall experience. You know, I walked into the weight room and they had like snacks and all types of stuff sitting out and it looked like a presentation. I'm like, are we allowed to take that kind of stuff? Or they're like, no, that's for you. So I'm like, oh, OK. So it's just like the amount of things that are available to you in the NFL is just kind of ridiculous. And I mean, you got to take advantage of it. Appreciate you, man. Welcome. Thank you. We got time for one more question. Dila, do you have your follow up now? Um, yeah, uh, Eric, just how, um, you know, uh, how, how do you see yourself fitting into the scheme? We know you play free safety. They're said they're going to be multiple. Uh, you know, uh, just how do you see uh, yourself fitting in since they haven't talked to you uh, at length about it yet, I guess? Yeah, um, I think the beauty of Coach Pease's uh, defense is that it is multiple and you never know where the pressure is coming. Um, you never know. You know, I could be down, I could be back, but I think the place I'll fit in the most is just, you know, a, a lot of people to get on, helping people to get lined up and play fast. So um, free safety, obviously strong safety, but I mean, you really got to be able to do everything in his uh, system.